Subtropical Storm Nicole is about to start barreling down on Florida, and before doing so, it could approach hurricane status. Significant impacts are not only expected to the peninsula, but we could also be looking at widespread impacts all up and down the eastern United States. I got all those details coming up for you guys right here. If you guys do find this video helpful and want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe with those notifications turned on, and also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want to help get this information out to other people as well. Let's get right down to business. First off, we are taking a look at our overall satellite imagery here. Our storm is located right here. It is a subtropical storm, not a standard tropical system. I notice how it's almost shaped like a comma head here. All of this convection over here located off to the east of the main circulation, this is all part of subtropical storm Nicole. And the reasoning for this is because a normal tropical system usually develops from the ground up. It's usually taking in that super warm water, bringing it up to the surface, condensating it, forming those thunderstorms. It's a surface-based phenomenon, but subtropical storms actually start to develop from the top down uh, with a low pressure system already up way in the atmosphere. So it's basically a reversed way of development uh, and that's why it's a subtropical storm and not a standard tropical storm uh, but it is a very large storm system with uh, a very high wind field uh, here's the cone forecast for the storm uh, again currently a subtropical system we have some hurricane warnings in effect uh, for the islands east of Florida here and this is expected to achieve, achieve hurricane status uh, as we get into tomorrow night by tomorrow night this storm is expected to make landfall somewhere around the east to southeast coast of Florida here. Uh, and then eventually it will move up the Florida Peninsula and then into southern Georgia here, likely still remaining a tropical storm or a, a subtropical storm as it does so. And then it's going to be moving off to the northeast across the Carolinas into the mid-Atlantic here and eventually all the way up the New England coast here as a, a subtropical or post-tropical system. And just look at how big this wind field is. This entire yellow highlighted region around uh, where the storm is located right now, this is where we are currently looking at winds of at least uh, tropical storm force here. And we have widespread tropical storm warnings all up and down the Florida coast here. Here are the warnings that are currently in effect for uh, the peninsula. All of these dark red uh, areas here across eastern Florida, these are tropical storm warnings. All of these lighter salmon pink colors, these are currently tropical storm watches. And there are also so storm surge warnings and hurricane watches that are sprinkled in there across eastern Florida uh, that you just can't see because it is underneath these tropical storm warnings. So uh, there is a lot going on here. You guys need to take this seriously if you do live in Florida or the southeastern United States here. Uh, because this is going to be a dangerous situation. We are looking at the possibility of some gusts exceeding hurricane force uh, and also the possibility of storm surge flooding and standard rainfall flooding as well. Now, here's the possibility of looking at tropical storm force winds. Look at how broad this wind field is here. Uh, Florida, it's almost a guarantee that you're going to be looking at tropical storm force winds, and it remains that way as we get into southern Georgia. And then there's going to be chances of getting winds of this magnitude over the next five days all the way up and down the eastern United States coastline here, even including areas like New York City. So we're really going to have to keep an eye on this here. We're looking at the possibility of this being a widespread wind event, not only for Florida, but the entire uh, portion of the e uh, extreme eastern United States. Now, on a much smaller scale, there's also a, a bullseye region here that could be looking at hurricane force winds, which is those winds sustained over 75 miles an hour. That includes areas like eastern Florida here. Uh, you are going to want to keep an eye on this if you do live in any of these shaded regions. While the chances are small, this likely will achieve hurricane status, at least briefly, uh, until it makes landfall in eastern Florida. So keep an eye on this one for sure. Here's the experimental uh, storm surge forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, and as you guys can see here, from southeastern Georgia all the way towards Hallandale Beach in southeastern Florida, we are likely to be looking at storm surge uh, inundation of three to five feet. So that's pretty significant. Even the mouth of the St. Johns River will be looking at storm surge uh, in the three to five foot range here. That is why we have some storm surge warnings in effect. 
There is going to be significant impacts from the storm surge. You are going to want to uh, keep a very close eye on this here. If you live near the coastline, have property near the coastline, uh, if you you know have any objects of any sort laying around out there, this is going to be dangerous. That's why you have these warnings in effect, and you need to pay attention to them. Extreme southeastern Florida between Hallandale Beach and Ocean Reef, that area could also be looking at some minor storm surge flooding, but it's going to be more in the one to two foot range. But pretty much the entire eastern coast of Florida, it's south southeastern Georgia could be looking at some dangerous storm surge flooding. Now, here's the simulated radar for uh, subtropical storm Nicole and possible hurricane Nicole here as we get further along into the future. Now, here is the situation by about 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. We're taking this every six hours along, and as we get into late tomorrow night, this storm will be approaching landfall in eastern Florida. We don't know the exact area down to the mile marker just yet, but this is going to impact eastern Florida. It will make landfall in eastern Florida here, and we got a pretty good idea of it right here. It's going to be probably somewhere near West Palm Beach. Uh, it will be approaching 970 millibars as we get towards that time. Remember, the lower the pressure of a storm, the stronger that it is, and it's going to be approaching Florida as we get into tomorrow night, and then eventually Thursday morning, this will already be well into central and northern Florida here, still as a, 700, uh, a 973 millibar low, and then it will likely move up the Big Bended region here, and of course, as it crosses into Georgia and loses the uh, moisture influence of the warm waters of the uh, Gulf and the Atlantic Ocean, it will be weak. Uh, but it will be continuing to drop some widespread impacts to the um, eastern United States. So as we get further along the time, we're switching models here. And as we get into Friday evening, look at all this uh, th shower and thunderstorm activity from South Carolina all the way up into Vermont, New York, New Hampshire. This is just widespread significant rainfall. And there could also be some severe weather sprinkled in there from the Carolinas into the mid-Atlantic, maybe even up into New England here, because we are looking at some very strong wind shear associated with this extra tropical cyclone. Uh, and because of that, and with conjunction of the moisture that we are going to have, there could certainly be some severe weather, maybe some tornado activity, we'll have to see. Which, that's another thing, Florida will also have the possibility to be looking at isolated tornadoes from uh, this storm as well, because of all that wind shear that is available. And look at all this heavy rain that even continues into New England as we get through the weekend time frame. Now, because of that, look at all the rainfall that this region could be seeing from the Mid-Atlantic through the eastern Ohio Valley, all the way up into the uh, northeastern United States here. These pink regions you're looking at, uh, two to four, or one to two inches of rain. These uh, reds, you're looking at two to four inches. And then in these golds, you're looking at over four inches of rainfall, which is going to be a possibility sprinkled in there from Virginia into New York here. These are some very heavy rainfall totals that could definitely lead to some ice, some uh, scattered flash flooding here. And as far as southeastern Florida, or as far as Florida goes in the southeastern United States, it's going to be even worse because... Um, these dark green regions, two to four inches. And then at, once you get beyond uh, these yellow shaded regions here, you're looking at anywhere from four to six inches of rain or even greater. So areas like Orlando down to Miami, north towards Jacksonville, and then eventually even into the Carolinas here, you are looking at a lot of rainfall from the storm. You are definitely going to want to keep an eye on this here because we're looking at the potential for not only storm surge flooding, but also just general rainfall flooding as well. And that's, of course, in addition to the strong damaging winds and also the ice tornado threat as well. So you guys need to take this seriously as we go into the days ahead. Make sure to pay attention to those warnings, advisories, and watches as we go into the future. And guys, that is going to wrap it up for this update. If you did enjoy it and want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. And also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. I hope you guys all stay safe and I will talk to you guys back here next time.